Okay, so as I mentioned before, normally you don't use ND filters to take pictures of the sun. What you need for the taking pictures of the sun is a solar lens. And you'll notice that the solar lens on the on one side it looks very shiny and on the other side it's it looks very dark. So the side that we're going to screw into the camera with the threading that looks dark on the other side looks shiny. So let's go ahead and screw those lens onto the camera. Okay, so now we have the solar lens all screwed in. Look at that shiny side on the front. And basically what the solar lens does is that it cuts out a lot of the light and heat and it prevents you from damaging the sensor in your camera. Now, let me just show you an illustration right now to show you why you want to protect the sensor in your camera. I know most people know that you should never look at the sunlight through a regular 35 millimeter camera which has basically a mirror and so you see exactly what's going into the camera's lens. The same thing applies to a digital camera. A, the sensor inside a, a digital camera is probably even more sensitive than the human eye and sunlight will damage the sensor inside your camera unless you use a solar lens to filter out a lot of that light and heat. But let's look at this video that I did to show why uh, you should avoid pointing your camera directly at the sun unless you have a solar filter installed. You'll notice that I have the camera in moonshot mode and that's a trick that you can use to get good pictures of the sun. You see, with the solar filter, the sun is, has the same intensity as a bright moonlight. So if, if I go over here where you can actually see the screen, and the reason why I'm holding tripod is just so difficult to, to get it set and with the wind blowing and everything moving the tripod I'd rather just hold it and steady it and and I have the timer set so let me take that off I zoom back in I get my 2000 millimeter zoom I center it good I have a picture Press again. Okay, so we're shaking that time. And it's good to take several shots. Good to take several shots because you never know what might happen. Centered. And like I said, if you're using Moonshot, the sun behind a solar lens looks exactly like a bright moonlight. So the camera will automatically adjust for that. And then you can get some nice pictures. And now we have clouds passing over. Okay, so that should give us some nice shots. That, that effect. Yeah, so right away we're, we're getting those pictures. In Moonshot, I think there's a timer just in, just to make sure that uh, after you press the button, then you know the camera might still be vibrating. So I think they put that as a safeguard. I'll check the manual to see if there's a way of turning that off. But let's find the sun. And the thing is the sun is directly overhead, so I have to tilt the camera all the way up. So this is not exactly a comfortable position for my hand. Now apart from using Moonshot, I can use Automatic Mode. And if I go to Automatic Mode, I zoom out, I find the sun, release, I zoom in. 
are. There you go. So I can take several shots unhindered. But if you have a tripod that allows you to do a lot of fine tuning and lock it in, you can use moonshot mode. I have used it before and it has worked well for me. Especially if you don't want to shake the tripod and then you can use the remote. So one question you might ask is, how many pictures of the sun do I need? These dark spots, for example, are sunspots, and they're actually storms occurring on the sun. They're constantly changing, and scientists study them and their effects on planet Earth. If it's cloudy where the scientists are, and they can't take pictures of the sun, your pictures could prove valuable if it's sunny where you are. If you watch my moon video, you would have seen me talk about this app that allows you to track objects in the sky. So you could capture an object like the International Space Station passing between you and the Sun. Also, because Mercury and Venus are closer to the Sun on an inner orbit, it's possible to take a picture of these planets as they cross between the Earth and the Sun. This crossing is called a transit, and unfortunately, none of them will be happening anytime soon. The next transit of Mercury is scheduled for November 13, 2032, and the next transit of Venus is scheduled for the 10th to the 11th of December 2117, by which time I believe I will have moved on from this model Nikon. However, there are a few solar events that will be happening much sooner. So go ahead and get your solar filter now, as the prices tend to rise sharply a few weeks before these solar events. The first event will be the solar eclipse of October 25th, 2022. This is going to be a partial eclipse, which means the moon will only partially cover the sun. What this means for you as a photographer is that at no time should you look at the eclipse without a solar filter, nor should you remove the solar filter from your camera at any time. You have been warned. This eclipse will be viewable from Europe, Southwest Asia, Northeast Africa, and the northernmost part of the Atlantic Ocean. Please consult the map at the link below to see the darkness intensity at the different locations. After that, we'll have an annular solar eclipse on October 14th of 2023, and this will be viewable in most of the Americas and a tiny part of West Africa. During an annular solar eclipse, the moon is further away from the Earth, so a little bit of sunlight will still get through. For that reason, you should not remove your solar filter from your camera or look at the sun without some type of eye protection. The next big solar eclipse after that will occur on April 8, 2024 and will be observable in North America, Central America, Greenland, Iceland and the Atlantic Ocean Islands of the Northern Hemisphere, including parts of Great Britain as well as a tiny portion of Spain and Portugal. This will be a total eclipse. So if you find yourself in the zone of totality, you can remove your solar filter during totality, but be sure to put it back on as soon as the sun begins to re-emerge. The eclipse will actually start in the Pacific Ocean, so many of those islands will experience some of the eclipse, but only the island of Tepuca will experience anything near to totality. Mexico, the United States and Canada are the only countries that will experience a zone of totality. And of course, my apologies to the folks in Australia and Southeast Asia, as you will also have your total eclipse in April of 2023. So, now that you have the info, you can start making those reservations to secure a good place at a good price. Don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified of my next video.